Well, thanks for joining me on my potato grasshopper infestation issue. And I'll explain what I got going on here in this video and maybe we can learn something from the grasshopper. Right? Is the grasshopper the messenger? Or is it really the problem? Let me explain. I'm over here at the farm and want to look at the, well, we're going to look at those onions, but we are going to look at, at the potatoes and try to figure out why these grasshoppers like certain ones. Now, so look at this. This is one variety. Now look at all the hoppers. And then we get to right here. That is another variety. Big difference, right? So, uh, oh, so look, the farmer. There's another farmer over here working, not just myself. He left a potato on the ground. Oh, so it looks like a red Norland. We pl planted red Norland over here and purple Viking. I believe that's what he planted. Uh, we'll dig up some of that and see what happened there. But over here, I'll have to go back because the sun, hold on. Okay, on this uh, row, we've planted uh, four different kinds. This one is a uh, purple Viking and it's a uh, early potato, but um, it was very slow to sprout. It took forever to get it to sprout, come out of the ground. In fact, some of it we've replanted. Um, but its qualities are that it is slow to sprout, so it's fantastic for the root cellar. And I've been able to eat them all year round. Now we're, you can see we're harvesting potatoes now. All right, so I've made it all year with that variety because of its winter storage capabilities. So this is a purple Viking. And now we're changing varieties right here. So this is an earlier planting of purple, vi purple Viking. That was the um, latest planting. And this is a different variety. So right here, you can tell that the grasshoppers really like that variety better than this variety. Now, there's a couple schools of thought, right? Maybe the grasshopper can eat this one and digest it better than this one. Meaning that one's uh, photosynthesis abilities and what it's produced in its leaves is not as high a quality as this one. That's a possibility. Um, there's plant defense. There's a whole bunch of stuff, right, that can cause this to happen. But uh, we'll walk on down here because the variety is going to change again here. So this is still the same variety. Now we get into another variety right here. So this one they ate way earlier than that one. In fact, this was one of the first ones, this variety right here. I think there's only three or four, four, four hills of it. They ate first. So they ate that and then that one over there. And then they went to this variety here. Uh, changed the varieties again. And they've still left the purple Viking in pretty good shape. Okay, we have some more over here. Okay, so this, I got to dig some of this up. I didn't plant this to know which variety it is, but I'm anticipating it to be the purple Viking just from how it's standing up to the grasshopper pressure. And uh, we're thinking there's potatoes underneath these potatoes. So even with the pressure, maybe it won't make that much difference. Um, hold on and we'll dig some and we'll be right back with you. Hey, <clears throat> sorry about the sun. This is Montana and we have a lot of it. But we did have a gorgeous little shower last night, cooled things off. It was the first shower of any kind, even though it wasn't measurable, any kind that we've had in more than a month. It's been brutal. So that was a great reward and we are so happy. Um, we're gonna dig up a little bit of this potato here and try to figure out which variety we got. You can see the hoppers sitting on that leaf stem there, which already ate a bunch of leaf off. Gorgeous. That is a purple Viking. 
so we've got purple viking planted there that the grasshoppers are not destroying completely. And uh, Red Norlin, down there where, on down here where it is getting destroyed. So two different genetics, same pressure, same soil management, and the same bed. So that's pretty amazing. Yeah, purple viking, you wanna see what it looks like inside? I think these potatoes are the best potatoes going. Not only do they have tremendous storing capabilities, they're just gorgeous potato. Look, white inside. Beautiful, huh? Yeah. Oh, I wish the cameras could smell. You guys are missing out on a lot of really good smells. So this smells amazing. Give it a little bit of wipe off here. Tastes amazing. So that's purple viking. I think it's a 55 day variety, so early maturing. That's pretty cool, huh? Well, thanks for joining me with this uh, potato grasshopper investigation. And um, I think from what I can see, I would be thinking if I have to deal with a lot of grasshoppers, that, um, and they're not going anywhere, right? This guy isn't even mature. And the way Montana's weather is, they may be hanging around for a few years. They've already been here. This is the third year, the second year in mass numbers. So as gardeners, I think if we can figure out a way to uh, help ourselves with plant genetics, that is the thing to do. And so for this area, we're in zone three, and uh, the purple viking definitely is doing us a good job. So, for multiple reasons. So we're gonna keep on with that. If uh, any of you know how to control the scab, or if you got some ideas on uh, any of the subjects we talked about today, the grasshoppers, the potato varieties, why the, why the grasshopper wanted to eat one potato over another, any of that stuff, please comment in the um, comments below and we'll get back with you on that. It's gonna be exciting, we're gonna to learn together. So, as I say, we want to reach as many people as we can, right, to grow more nutritious food. I'm thinking these potatoes are gonna be pretty darn nutritious. And so we wanna share with everyone that we can share with. So if you could subscribe and then hit the thumbs up button, that will help. Well, that's it for out here. So now, after showing you what's going on with the potato plantings and the grasshopper infestation, and we talked about the purple viking, the red norlin, and I think it's red gem, and a couple other specialty t potatoes, and the grasshopper deal. Now I asked you a question at the beginning of the video, right? Is the grasshopper the problem? Or are they really the messenger? Leave your comments below. I'd be interested to see what you guys think. Because I know a lot of gardeners have lost completely everything this year and farmers to lose everything to the grasshoppers, what we call them hoppers here in Montana, to the hoppers. They've been pretty bad. And so I, I have passion for them, but I also want to learn from the hoppers. And I think they've given us really good examples of um, things that we can learn from them. So my gut feeling is, and my educated feeling, this is the knowledge bomb for the day, by the way, thank you for staying to this late in the video. The grasshopper's the messenger. They're not actually the problem. So our problem actually is plant health, which is related to the soil health. And so I think we've got to fix our soil problems. So soil health and then plant nutrition, which should go hand in hand. 
So I hope we, you come along to learn and we can learn together and we'll be walking through how we're going to grow healthier and healthier and more nutritious food in f future videos. Hope you can join us. Um, comment below. Don't forget the buttons. Subscribe. Thumbs up button if you can and if you liked it. If you learned anything, hit the thumbs up button. That will really help us out. Okay, until now, for now, I'm going to go eat some potatoes. See ya. And Montana beef, grass fed, plus some veggies. I think it's summer squash. Yeah. Thanks for visiting. Go healthy.